and we are live. Morning, morning, everyone. Welcome to another edition of the Bread for Soul Convos with myself, Sir LSG. And as some of you might know, on this show, basically, this is where we learn and we teach and we learn by sharing experiences, sharing knowledge, um, especially um, specifically with regards to the music industry. And one of my on today's show, my guest is Kulo the Song, and I'm happy to have the brother on the show. How are you, bro? I'm happy with you, man. <laughs> I have to apologize. <laughs> um, if this is a show where we get real, then people must know that I am not a morning person. <laughs> <laughs> I think I don't, I don't sleep at night. I sleep during the day like an owl, like a lion. <laughs> <laughs> Bro, you don't know how, how much training I had to get myself into just to wake up every day and get into some routine, you know. Um, cool. Yeah, man. But thank you nonetheless for, for doing this with us, bro. No, no, thank you. Thank you for inviting me. Um, thank you for getting my ass out of bed. <laughs> <laughs> bro, um, it's, it's been, it's been, sorry, you were saying? I'm saying it's beautiful in its own way, you know. You, you get to wake up and, and be involved with whatever is happening out there. For sure, for and, sure. Uh, yeah, just, um, you know, apply your energy in good things. I like that. For sure, bro. Um, it's been it's been quite cold in in South Africa in recent days. Yo, <laughs> it's super cold. Bro. <laughs> it is. I'm wondering, super like, cold. for someone who's who's never really here during this time, because you either uh, chasing summer, you in 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 Europe or elsewhere. Do you ever travel of this uh, with this cold that you experience in SA? Man, I think my body. It's just used to multi climates, you know, <laughs> um, and and I think right now it's 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 feeling a lot of um, changes. I mean, obviously with everything that's happening, uh, being in one um, city or one climate, you know, for for, for a long time. Um, but I think it's 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 well prepared, you know, now you know to experience um through meeting people you know when traveling and you're tired and they tell you what to take you know um and so i like back in the day i used to get a lot of like flu and stuff you know like during this time it was over for me <laughs> you know um but i think now you know um my my immune system uh, responds to these kind of things a little better um because of you know the advices i've been given and also understanding my myself a little better you know yeah do you ever do you ever feel not at home when you're in south africa i mean like you travel so much and actually before i ask you that question i just want to know do you own an apartment or houses or apartments in in other countries and secondly do you ever not feel home when you come back to south africa no, no, I'm not, I'm not there yet, but it's, it's part of the dream, you know. Um, I like that you bring it up uh, and, and, and it, it sparks something in me, you know. Um, for the nature of, of what we do, moving around the world, you know, such a thing is of value. Um, yeah, I think in terms of the, the feeling of home is something you can never really eliminate, you know. You can't really eliminate. Um, it's just, it's embedded in you. You know, and uh, that's the thing about home. Home is a feeling anyway, and it walks in with you anywhere in the world, you know. Um, so, I mean, that's just always been my attitude, and I think it has really influenced um, what I do, you know, musically, and how I see and interact with people, you know, um, in different parts of the world. So, it's like, you know, I've got a story to tell wherever I go, and because of that feeling of home, um so you 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 just keep on carrying it wherever you go for sure bro for sure um so I, i've got before i actually we carry on with the with the chat i've got a, a thing on the show now that i call the question of the day 
And okay. today's question I'm asking whoever is watching, if you could go party anywhere in the world, guys, if you go party, if you could go party anywhere in the world right now, you know, let's say there's no COVID, COVID is ending tomorrow and there, but okay, today you're going to party. Where do you want to go party? And why would you go party there? Let me start with you, uh, Kulo. Where, where would you, what's the first place actually that you would go had, is if the ban was uh, to be lifted? <laughs> I think I don't know for some reason as you were you know um, I'm, I'm, I'm putting out the question I was I just had this image of Thailand in my head just popping up you know <laughs> <laughs> I think that's one place um, where I felt very liberated you know um traveling through the different islands. A friend of mine from, from the States, um, uh, Chappelle, actually, you know, he had, he had uh, this culture that every year he goes to Thailand, you know, at the beginning of the year. And at what is why I decided to, 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 to join him. And, you know, we went to Bangkok, we went to Phuket, we went to uh, Koh Samui, you know, um, I, and I, I, I'd never seen, you know, you know, such a theatrical and, and, and dramatic place in its own right. Um, you know, there's like in almost all these places and cities and islands, you know, there's like a strip of bars and nightclubs and strip, strip clubs, a lot of like crazy stuff, man, that you, you just expose yourself to over there. And um, and I like places like that because you learn a lot, you know, about about yourself. You know, um, yeah. when there is more to explore, when there's more to see, you see how to react, you know, to to, to different things. Yeah, you know. And so um, yeah, Thailand is one of those places for me. Even on the spiritual sides, you know, like you know, we took a scooter. I had an accident the day before with the scooter, but I got back the next day and we went to go see the big Buddha, you know? <laughs> so it was just an interesting adventure, adventure, you know? And I think that's what I'm missing right now. I'm missing a bit of adventure in my life, For you know? Sure. And I think it keeps me going. Um, yeah, then being in one place, you know? Um, but um, yeah, yeah. It's, I think Thailand is definitely one of those places. Just for me, to ignite myself, then I can travel to the rest of the world. <laughs> okay, cool, cool. Because I was, I was about to ask, is that you not being a DJ, just you having fun on your own, or or is it part of you traveling to Thailand for a gig, or is it just in Jay for fun? Yeah, I think, you know, Thailand is one of those places where I, 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 I enjoy it both under DJing mm. and, 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 and personal um, side of me. Um, because as I said, you know, my, my first experience of it was going there as a holiday, but as, you know, as you know, the guy went there every year, you know, so he has built relationships, mm. you know, with people over there, you know, so I ended up playing at, at, at some club called, um, Catch Club, Catch Club Phuket. Cool. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. By, by, by the beach. Uh, really great time. A lot of Russians having a nice time, you know, running away from the cold. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, yeah. It's, it's, I think it's, 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 the personal side is important. You know, sure. it's important that we, we get a sense of joy and, and, and pleasantness, you know, when it mm -hmm. comes to your personal side, you know, because everything else, you know, will, will be... We'll be down with ease, you know, yeah. uh, no anxieties and all that, you know. So it's, it's, um, yeah, yeah. I think I, I need something like that too. <laughs> and do you do you um when I, when we had a chat uh, recently, you you were telling me how sometimes it's like you be traveling so much and then you get into a, another city and you actually a few minutes from there you actually forget where you where you were coming from, where you flew from, you know. Um, but I just want to know, like, mentally, how do you deal with um, being out there and traveling so much? Like, does it ever get to you? Is, are there, let, me, let me ask it this way. Are there negative 
uh, effects of being a busy world class DJ? Hundred um, percent. There's definitely uh, pros and cons. <laughs> um, I think you, you just gotta have enough thick skin of, of attitude, you know, um, towards this thing, and and also you know try and manage it in your own little ways. You know, you don't put yourself in a position where you body more than you can chew, you know, type of thing. Um, because your physical well-being is, is very critical in this game, man. And I think one of the lowest moments I have as a DJ or as an artist is, is getting to a gig and you're just so tired, you know, <laughs> from all the traveling. And there's nothing wrong with the gigs. The gigs are amazing. In fact, when you get there, no matter how tired you are, you know, you feed off each other with the crowd. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you, you just build this new energy and we take it from there yeah. type of thing. Um, but I think it's, it's, it's very important, man, you know, to try to find ways, you know, of balancing yourself, you know, both mentally and physically. And spiritually, you know. Mm. So it's it's. I mean, I've, I've had different kinds of situations. As I said, you learn as you go. You learn through experience. Experience for me is the best teacher. Mm. I've been in situations where you travel to like, like Los Angeles, which is like on the other side of the world. And when you land, you know, even the, the, the time has changed. Next thing, you go shower at the hotel. You eat some dinner. Next thing, they pick you up. You have to go to the show. You yeah, I haven't mean, even dealt with the jet lag and all that. And then you just have this like weird anxiety, you know, <laughs> that just attacks you. And, but with that happening, it's not necessarily bad because now you're aware, you know what something is going on within you. So next time you do better, you say, okay, cool guys. If I'm playing in places that are just so far out, you know, we can just, say I'll arrive two days or one day before, so I, I get time to relax, mm. get time to adapt to the environment. Mm. Um, and then, um, yeah, you're gonna, you're gonna avoid a certain health hazards when you're doing things that way. That's why I say, I think it's also a bit of a management issue. Mm. Uh, and also, it also depends on your drive, you know. I've, I've seen people that, you know, you know, guys like Dixon, you'd hear like stories. <laughs> Um, even black coffee, you know, I look at the, the, the amount of sets that he plays at high and the amount of time, you know, and energy dedicated to all the other shows he does. You do other shows in other countries and then he lands with the jet to play another long set at high. And I'm just like, man, how does this guy do it? <laughs> you know, so I, I respect people like that, 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 you know, participate and put energy in the game, um, at the highest level, mm. you know? So I think it's, 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 yeah, it's, it's, it's an interesting subject. You know, you just gotta be gradual and on it, you know, don't um, rush the situation where you're gonna have a hundred gigs a night. Mm. You know, we watch like a Vici documentaries or the story, you know, and things like that. And I realized that, man, you can have an easy and, and mega successful life, you know, but if you are not, you know, in check with the certain things within yourself, you know, with your mental health, and your physical well-being or whatever that's bothering you. Um, it's going to be hard for you to do your best, you know, in, in, in the game, you know. So, yeah, it is it is something that I, I keep in check from time to time. For sure. I love that so much, man. And uh, if I may just uh, put, up, put this out on the show every first Monday of the month, I have yeah. a psychiatrist specialist, Dr. Gwen Tonyani from the life custom Hof hospital well she's based at the life custom Hof hospital it's in midrand and she's basic she basically deals with a lot of issues whether it's depression anxiety and stuff like that but for this show what she does it's, it's like we chat specifically about artist issues and issues that right. artists might face you know and we including depression into including anxiety and i think uh it's a, it's a dope thing for people to check out every first monday of the month um right here on the show but I want to ask you, uh, Kulune, um, your name, well, Kasetswana, let me tell you, in my language, uh, they say, Lina Lebeke Sorum. And basically what that means is that you're, it, 
if I may translate it directly, your your name will follow you, or you will follow your name. And uh, whether it's good or bad, you know, depending what what, what your parents named you, you you will follow your name. And you've done so uh, uh, the same with your with your name, good or too. Um, but what are the, the earliest memories of you and music, especially um, in your family setup? My mom. <laughs> My mom is a fantastic singer. Um, and, I mean, she grew up in a musical environment, you know, because my grandfather as well was very heavily involved with music um, back home in, in my small town, um, Ashoi. Um, in church, um, in church, definitely, my grandfather was contributing a lot. You know, when it when it comes to when it comes to the audio video side of things, um, you know, even like is my perfect wedding stuff. You know, I saw my grandfather doing this thing in like '96. You know, like long time ago. You know, he would record, you know, um, 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 weddings. Yeah. You know, that were happening within the uh, the, the community. And then you put that on tape for them and, you know, I don't know, play a bit of music there or something um, with the intros and the, and, the, and the credits. You know, this is, this is stuff that I saw at, at, at home and I didn't even know how it works at the time. And uh, my grandfather, you know, he had this piano or keyboard at his house, you know, that everyone uh, uh, knew that you don't just go in there and play. You have to ask him first. You know, it, it, it was just like his sacred space. You know, you could tell. You know, because every time when you when you're visiting him and when you wake up in the morning, um, that's my my earliest memory of of him. You know, like when you wake up in the morning, he's always there with his headphones. You know, playing his music, and he's not even waking up everyone else. Uh, you know, so it's 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 it was within the family. You know, my, my interest in music and motion picture, you know, it, it was embedded in me, I think, early on, you know. Um, I just wish, you know, um, in fact, I think I'm going to do this. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to challenge my mother and be like, Mom, let's just get on a track. You know, let's record a beautiful piece of music you sure. know, and, and reflect on the energy of the times. I think that would be so cool. I just thought of that now. <laughs> so dope, so dope. But, uh, but yeah, my earliest memory of music goes um, um, way back home. Yeah. Cool, man. And uh, when I first heard of you, I think it was through DJ Christos, uh, 2008 yeah. or something like that. And, uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Who are some of the people who gave you your first break into the industry? DJ Kabila. Sure. That's the guy. Um, I, mean, I, I love how me and Kabila met. Um, he's always been this like character of mystery, you know? <laughs> like I would hear about him and I used to be in boarding school and it would bunk out. We would bunk out and go to nightclubs. You know, sorry, I'm making confessions now. You know? <laughs> Please do. <laughs> we'd bunk out and we would go to nightclubs. And you know, I'd hear about you know this Kabila character, and you'd see him in the shadows, you know, in his wheelchair in the club. And so now it came to a point where we couldn't afford, you know, the boarding part of the school. So I had to uh, find an alternative accommodation within the city. Um, in Durban and so I ended up living with my cousins in their apartment um, downtown in, 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 in South Beach in Durban um, it's Kumbuzo, you know from 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 Lemon and Herb oh. uh, I think he was still in varsity at the time when I was in high school and guess what happens oh guess what I find out is that Kapila lived downstairs you know like he lived downstairs and i see this guy he's in a wheelchair he drives i'm like you know everything about him i'd never seen before you know and i mean through time we, we ended up connecting because he was friends you know with, with uh, uh with some of the guys that we were living with um and uh, yeah, I mean, they told him that I'm interested in music, da da da. And next thing, I found myself going to his apartment, going through his vinyls, learning how to DJ, 
and he's teaching me all these things. Um, like 16 at the time, and I'm very underage, and I'm carrying his bags to the clubs, you know? <laughs> so I've always been known as that guy, you know, who, 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 who travels and moves around with, 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 with Kabila in, in, in the city. And uh, yeah, that was my, basically my first introduction into the world, you know, of, of, of dance music and nightclubs and, and DJs. And, um, and uh, yeah, he was obviously a childhood um, um, friend of, of, of people like, like, like Black Coffee, you know? So it was, it was, um, I think it was just, I don't know, it was, it was like a fate or a, or a good turn out of events. Um, 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 to meet Nati uh, through um, uh, Kabila, you know, and um, yeah, and then from there on, you know, I submitted music because I was, uh, at the same time when I was learning how to DJ through his ten tables, I had bought a computer uh, from an old friend of mine and it came preloaded with uh, a very legendary software that I respect till this day, Fruity Loops. <laughs> <laughs> And I just got obsessed with the program uh, every day. You know, every day I would be on it, um, trying to understand how it works. Basically, you know, trying to understand, or maybe just, let me just say, you know, trying to make music that sounded or sounded as warm as the stuff I was exposed to um, on, on, on vinyl and or in the clubs. You know, so it's, 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 um, yeah, that's, that's basically how, 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 I, how I started there and how I got into making music and, yeah. you know, uh, and sending it out to DJs via people like Kabila, you know, give it to him and be like, yo, what do you think, Roca? Because Kabila is very musically inclined and I love, I love his taste in music and he's such a soulful guy, you know, like, uh, with like a beautiful heart, you know? Mm. And, 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 and I really appreciate, you know, that, that, that sort of energy. And, and, and I think it's, it, it really paved the way um, that, that, that I've, I've, I've traveled, you know, um, sure. this far. Sure. I, I want to talk about mentorship, but before we get to that, um, someone, uh, I think it was on Twitter, I was asking me, no, you have to ask Kudo about his work with Black Coffee. Why are they no longer working together? And I don't want to get into spice, you know, but I really want to get into uh, mentorship and the importance of mentorship. And um, if you could let us know, like, what the role that Black Coffee played in your career, especially uh, in the beginning, and the role that he plays now, if there is any, you know, I mean, you you guys travel separate, um, you, you go in separate paths, but you're still traveling uh, to the island. You're still playing, not very similar gigs, but it's still within the island, you know. But I want to know his role in your career in the beginning and his role right now in your career. Um, I, I think Coffee has always had that, that, that um, big brother mental spirit. And I think he, he you know, he's... He's just one of those guys, man, you know, that, that they just have like, like, like so much wisdom. You know, he's a man of vision. You know, even with this like law of attraction stuff, you know, that you see going around these days. Um, I always tell people, you know, I, 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 saw, I, saw, I saw that, you know, in practicality, you know, from people like Nati. Nati will talk about his dreams. Uh, in front of you, you know, and he'll tell you all the right things, you know, give you all the right information. Um, and you'd see him manifest all of that, you know, like the things that he has talked about, you know, in an incredible way, in many ways you can think of. Um, you know, so um, having like someone like that, you know, um, I'm, I'm close to you, you know, it changes you as well. You start believing more in yourself. You know, there's another thing that I think um, that our people, you know, um, don't really have too much. And, and, and that is a, a good balance of like self-esteem and, 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 and visions and dreams and all these things. You know, I think you, you need some sort of motivation to tap into that part of yourself, you mm -hmm. know? So it's, it's, it's people like him, you know, that, that brew that, uh, out of you, you know what I mean? Like it's, it's, I don't know if you watched that, 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 that Michael Jordan uh, 
documentary. I haven't, no. You haven't watched it? <laughs> no. Um, the Last Dance. <laughs> the Last Dance. You know, there was a part there uh, where I really thought about um, I'm coffee where, when, when Michael Jordan was saying that he, he just wanted to always play the game at the highest level. And a lot of people felt like he was, he, he was a bit of a bully, you know, he was a, a hard textured man, you know, uh, or hard to deal with. But basically all he has ever wanted to do was to get the best out of you, mm -hmm. you know, like to get the best in others because that's just his level of playing the game. Mm. You know, um, and and I'm like, wow! I think I've 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 been blessed to have experienced that and have seen that close at, at a close proximity. You know, from somebody, you know, who's actually working actually to bring the best out of themselves. You know, and then you also get inspired. You know, so I think it's 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 inspiration. You know, to sum up everything. You know, and to answer your question simply. You know, is a, a mega inspirational figure in my life. Even even today. Um, um, I, I mean, I don't, I, 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 I don't like keep in touch with coffee like every single day. Um, um, but you know, especially now with all these forms of communication, you know, you see what he's doing on social media, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, um, uh, even though you know you can also give him a call at any time, it's 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 it's, it's still beautiful for to see and, 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 and observe, you know, and, and witness to see him, you know, like pushing boundaries, you know, further and further. And, and, and it's crazy, as I said, like for me, it's, his story is phenomenal, you know, especially when it comes to just manifesting your dreams. Um, that's like my biggest memory when it comes to, to, to Nadia. Mm. Man. Mm. And, uh, I've got something here. I actually, before I, <laughs> I just move on like that, I do love the mm. fact that, um you know to have somebody who can who not only visualize their dreams like they actually say yeah. i'm gonna do this and then they do it you know what i mean like and sometimes we don't realize how how important it is to have it in your mind to tell yourself i'm gonna do this and do this make it clear that this is what i mean by this is actually this you know and and the vision is clear in your mind you can now work towards steps of taking or making that vision a reality and and i love that so much but um i, I wanna while, while you are in the in the subject of mentorship you yeah. uh not so long ago um opened your own record label the song music and yeah. i have a clip from one of the artists on the label and let's check it out before we carry on okay <laughs> Yo, what's up guys, it's Mr. Joe, hope everyone is good. How I met Stood of the Song is really like a crazy, amazing thing for me. You know, as a, I was a kid who listened to a lot of music growing up, I was inspired by, you know, a lot of music growing up and he was one of the, the artists that inspired me to be who I am today. And I, you know, I always always grateful for that. And, you know, it was just me, you know, constantly trying to reach out. So, you know, I I asked for his email address, sent him my music and I had, you know, the the God given opportunity to get to release on uh, one of his compilations on twenty sixteen, which was a Watergate twenty one compilation. So by Tulu the song. So it, it was uh, a great step for me as I believed you, you know in trying to see further and this was one of those things as an artist for me that gave me inspiration so from that year of 2016 you know I continued working making music and I continued you, you know to submit music and send music and I, I sent him uh, lost in my dub you, you, you know and that's where now on 2018 I got the chance to release a uh, on his label, uh, the song music, which I released in the last EP. So they signed the, the, the EP to the to the label, and yeah, man, uh, life continued, man. You, you know, uh, amazing response. You know, and he just made me see further, and I, I continued to learn as an artist from his teachings. You know, he made me believe in my own version of an artist, and 
I am continuing to drive that dream and believe in it and so that's how it, it, it is man and, and that's how you know like it all happened thank you yeah man <laughs> it's Mr. Joe, man, Joe. yeah this um uh, yeah man like what is it about him that you 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 um decided to to release his music on your label yeah i love mr joe i love i love, I love mr joe and i really appreciate his words um yeah they, they've, they've just changed my day you know and, and it's always heartwarming to you know to, to hear things like that you know to hear that the little bit that that you did do in people's lives you know um amounted to to to, to something of substance you know of, of, to spark something for him to continue further. Uh, I've always felt like, man, who's this guy making this crazy intergalactic coma, you know? <laughs> <laughs> I was like, man, I love, I love, I, I didn't, at the time, I didn't even know that Joe was, was from like KZ10. I had met him through a friend, uh, Umlungis, a friend and colleague. And, I've always just love the ways he, he, he picks his sounds. You know, he does sound mining. I call it sound mining, you know, when he when he makes music and and he, and he really does his best to, to 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 manipulate to make it sound like something else that is just beyond our understanding, you know. So it's um yeah, it, it, I think you know to the best way to understand Mr. Joe is 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 through through his music, you know, and somewhere somehow I just connected with this guy, you know, energy wise, and I was like, man, I just, I I I, I gotta have, I gotta do something with this guy, you know, anything, you know, we can collaborate, you know, make a release. Uh, we need to make people aware of his energy, you know. So um, yeah, he's definitely one of those guys, and everywhere I go in the world, bro, it's, is his is is his music, you know. People always come to me and say, who is that? Even when I'm playing like the unreleased exclusive stuff from him, um, people are always interested, you know, as to who is this guy, you know? So um, playing his music, you know, like his demos, you know, from different shows around the world, you know, uh, yeah, made, made me realize that people like him, you know, um, they should jump on the boat of a much bigger vision, you know, and take their sound, you know, and expose it internationally. And uh, yeah, post COVID, man, I really, you know, wish all the best, you know, to people like Mr. Joe and and um, um, yeah, and we're gonna be here uh, pushing, you know, and helping where we can, you know, to make him realize or to at least start his his journey into his dreams, you know. Sure, sure, man. Um, yeah. And uh, you released your first EP, The Bright Forest. And uh, Inner Visions, uh, that's uh, a, a label uh, owned by Dixon from Ame. And uh, I don't know, well, I, I heard in one of your interviews saying that you actually lost the stem files for, for, for Bright Forest. And that's why we have that low lo fi yeah. sounding. How did you even do that? Man, they, they just asked me to send the WAV files. Um, uh, next thing I, I, I see, I see people like Dixon, um, just dropping the track as it is at the time. I didn't even know what mixing was, you know, <laughs> um, I didn't even pay attention to such things. Uh, but I knew that the song was, what was, or, or the track was playable. I knew that, you know, you, you, you can do something with this, but I just didn't know about the release. You know, so obviously when I told them the story, um, uh, and then they were just like, okay, cool, you know, we'll send it to our engineer to do some things to it. And it just came back sounding so mega and fat. And I was like, wow. I didn't know that, you know, engineers could do such magic. Yeah. You know, to, 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 to my music and take it to the next level where it needs to be. Um, I think... The connection with Inner Visions, um, a bit of it has to do with me attending the Red Bull Music Academy in 2008 in Barcelona. It was actually my first time living in South Africa. Um, 
and I met guys there, you know, um, guys like Gert Janssen, you know, who, who's a, a colleague and DJ you know, in Europe, you know, who's worked with, you know, guys like Dixon for, for, for quite a while. Um, and everybody I played my music to that side, you know, uh, they would say inner visions, inner visions, inner visions, you know, inner visions. Um, they really believe that inner visions love the sound. Um, yeah, and then I think, you know, Dixon received a couple of emails from different people about my music, about my sound. Um, and then, then that's when, you know, that, that transaction um, um, started happening, you know, like exchanging music and then. They said, you know what, um, Dixon would love to release the Bright Forest. Um, and yeah, that was, that was my beginning, you know, my attached at Innovisions. And um, I really, it's one of those moments in my life that I really appreciate it because um, they had great distribution around, you know, um, territories like Europe, you know, and, and the US and all that. So it, it exposed my music, you know, to the relevant ears, um, that side. And then that was probably the beginning, you know, of, of of um, of a future of you know of a lot of things you know, the traveling the gigs the exposure the name and the awareness space to do you know mm. so um yeah sure shout out to you know shout out to them bro I mean you were only nineteen when you when you went to the Red Bull Music Academy in two thousand and eight and signing yeah. on a label like Inner Visions but also I want to yeah. ask you now about uh, what one thing that you also mentioned regarding Brad Forrest. <laughs> You said it showed how how much of a boring DJ you were back then, but I guess you were making a joke. Um, I want to ask you. I mean, it's been a long way since that. <laughs> a lot of things happened in between, you know. Um, but musically, where like how would you describe like your headspace right now musically from that nineteen year old and and you've had four albums in between and other a lot of remixes as well. How would you describe your headspace right now musically? Where where do you want to go? Uh, versatility, man. Um, I, I discovered that you know I have a very interested ear um, of different sounds, uh, different types of music, and this is what I appreciate about the the electronic world is that you know on this little laptop. I could I could create almost anything, you know. So I've always looked at the laptop as a lab of creation, um, you know. Just even exploring that musical software, you know, software is like Logic and all that. When you go through them, you go deeper. You realize that there's so much you can make, and there's so much that you connect with. Mm. You know, even some of the folders of sounds that you've never clicked on, you know, you realize even within there, there's just so much you can use um, to create some sort of rhythm. For me, as long as I could create. Um, something that moves me. It doesn't necessarily have to be uh, house music uh, or dance music. It, 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 in fact, you know, I'm, I'm at a point where I'm, I'm just so silent about the whole idea of of uh, genres, you know, because there's just so much out there. You know, everything's just colorful. It is what it is. You know, if you enjoy it, you enjoy it. If you don't, you don't. And um, my attitude now is to um, take that attitude of versatility, you know, and go back to some of the files, the archives. Like another thing, I've got a lot of archives <laughs> of unreleased music, mm. you know, and um, to be like a mixed, a mixed world thing, you know, the world of today and the world back then when I made those songs and I didn't finish them, you know, try to create this new beggar of sound, you know. So I think it's, you know, some of these things, uh, when you make them and you stop and you, you don't get inspired, it's just the beginning. You know, you'll never know. Probably 20 years later, that 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 bass or that beat, you know, could be a part of something very substantial. You know, so um, yeah, it's 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 it's. I think it's just about exploring, man. I love I love exploring. I love exploring. Um, that's why I, I, I don't like to dwell on the idea that Tula is a sound, you know. I think he may have some sort of energy, you know, but uh, I don't think Tula is a certain sound, you know. Man, I love that so much. And um, it, it, it's evident in your albums as well, you know, um, that there's always, there's, there had always been a progression, you know, like from the giant leap um, 
and all, through all four of your albums. One that I want to talk about in particular is this uh, washer. Because I think that's so dope that uh, this is where we, we, we saw you first taking on the mic and narrating kind of the story in the album. What was the inspiration of, with that album? My life is a scribble. I call it a jota. I'm just jottering things. I'm scribbling, scratching, trying, writing things out, writing numbers down, words down. Um, I just wanted to, 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 to tell a bit of a story, introduce people um, into what's really going on in my head, you know, like my future aspirations of being involved in motion picture. I know that. And uh, maybe a bit of writing, you know, so... I was I was just following my heart, you know. I was like, okay, cool. This is I'm I'm not trying to make the perfect project, yeah. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm the direction I'm trying to go. Um, it's even hard to, to to get advice on because I I I'd never been exposed to anything like that before. Um, like what I'm trying to make now, like some sort of a dance music frequency with with stories. Um, and yeah, it, it, it was just a one way of, of, of allowing people into my diary, you know. But um, and I've realized that some people pay careful attention from the tweets that I get, you know. So um, you know, aligning some of the things, some of the characters, um, with with my own character in real life, you know. So it's 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 it it it, it, it was a test project, you know, of the future, I believe, you know. So and. Um, yeah, and, and I think my next my next album will probably take that similar direction as well. Yeah. Um, so um, I'm I'm really excited about that. You know, it's gonna be the same, maybe not as organic as as Washer or as raw as Washer is. You know, but um, yeah, something is definitely coming like that in the future. I enjoy doing that, um, recording inside of like um, like like hotel room cupboards. You know, trying to get the sound right. <laughs> Um, recording the sounds, the vocals, you know, it, it, it was just me, you know, giving an, people an idea of what's really going on mm. holistically when it comes to uh, my, myself at the time, you know, so um, a little, it's, it's like a rapper, you know, writing a rap album or right, telling a story of some sort. It's kind of similar. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, 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 and 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 I, and I think I was watching and listening to special music at the time as well, you know. So that that got me to think like that, you know, from from guys like Kanye and, and Kendrick, mm -hmm. you know. So um, there the, the, the was the was that you know that 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 vast you know open minded element um, to it, you know. So um, but it, yeah, it was just the beginning. It wasn't. It wasn't meant to be um, like a complete project, you know, of some sort. As I say, it was just a beginning, and and I personally got inspired, you know, to do more of these kinds of things. Seeing people um, um, respond to it the way they did, you know, so uh, by them tweeting me all the character names and things like that, and I realized that okay, cool, you know, like some people are really paying attention to this, and um, I'm really grateful and I appreciate that. Yeah, man. And, and how far are you from realizing that dream of, you know, wanting to do, to make music for motion picture? Um, I mean, there was a movie that came out, I think it was in 2010, called um, Paradise Star, um, a, lo a local production. Uh, so um, basically my music was part of the soundtrack. Um, in that in, in, in that movie, and it, it kind of sparked uh, something in me, and I was like, maybe this is something I should look into in the future because I do enjoy how you know how picture and and and, and, and sonics connect, you know, even even sound effects, you know, those are all things I'm interested in, and uh, but because I mean, it, it's I think my my life has just felt very busy in the past few years. <laughs> Um, I haven't given enough time um, to, to 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 work on those things, and and it's 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 times like these, like during lockdown, you know, where I've been thinking a lot, um, reflecting a lot, and, you know, and um, starting writing things down again. 
you know. So I think it, it's 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 gonna improve from 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 that sort of attitude, you know, because I'm I am currently you know just writing my, my thoughts down and and things like that and just really trying to find out what's going on within me, you know. So it's um, I'm not sure how close. But, you know, um, I'm putting it out there as well to say, you know, to, to people and industry professionals in that world, um, you know, that there's someone here, you know, who's, who's willing to be a good student, you know, to, to, to learn, you know, about, about that world, you know, so I can be more um, active in the future in it, you know. So, um, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm definitely going gonna, gonna to make some moves around that soon. Yeah, I think putting it out there as well kind of, and nudges you in that direction to say, hey, my man, yeah. I need to start working on this, you know? <laughs> yeah, 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 man, yeah, man. Pen and paper, pen and paper. Yeah. Um, one of the most immediate resources that, that I have right now, pen and paper, in my mind. Sure. You know, um, so I think, I, think um, I should put some energy towards that and see what happens. Cool. I want to ask you about yeah. this uh, face mask, face mask um, just after your album Washa dropped. You know, was there a face? Uh, was there a phase that you were wearing a face mask, or are we are we gonna see that alter ego coming back soon? I've al- I've always believed that um, DJing is about those special moments, you know, um, where you can really bond with the crowd um, beyond technicalities. You know, so. Um, uh, I mean, even that day when I did that, uh, I think it, if I'm not mistaken, it was in Constitutional Hill Boiler Room. Yeah. Yeah, I came there with the whole entourage. Um, a lot of people would say it was, it, was, it, was, it was like spooky, but for me, it was just like a, a visual representation of what the music that's about to come was about, you know? Mm. So I, I, I just needed something to, to express it further, you know, at I don't know, two minutes, you know, even the mask thing, I'm not sure if I had planned to, to wear it through the last half of the set uh, per se, you know, I just wanted to create that, that special moment, you know, and every time I watch that, I still get goosebumps and I'm like, wow, this is what I'm talking about, you know? Um, Nothing is as beautiful as being in your your element, you know. Through it all, through all the noise, the industry is a very noisy place, um, you know. And being in your element is is one um, sacred space, you know, that I've been so much, you know. So and it's 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 it's. I just wanted to share that with with, with people, you know, to say that um, this is who I am, this is what I'm about, and um, I'm forever evolving. There's more to come, basically. Yeah, and uh, I wanted to ask you about um, reactions, right? Like when people react to your music, what are some of like the 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 moments that you could remember where like really people lost it when you played something? I've seen one on your Insta video, um, uh, on your Insta page where you were playing. Or I think it was Seth Combo was playing Rambo. And people were going nuts, man. Like, but for you, while you were playing, what are some of those moments that you could remember that, yeah, people really lost it? Shit, there's a lot of those. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm kidding, man. I don't, I don't, I don't mean to, uh, to be like that, blow my own horn or anything. Um, the, the video that comes to mind... Um, Joe's Butchery, I think back in 2000 and 2008 or 2009, yeah, somewhere there, you know, I was playing at Joe's Butchery and I was mixing Joe. There's a track by my new called Joe. It's like an instrumental and it was towards the end, you know, and it's got like these high hats in the end and you know, that's just so striking, you can't miss it. And I was mixing that with um, one of the old tunes by Bika Soul. Um, also one of my biggest inspirations, you know, um, very substantial sound, very heavy, low frequencies. I remember that moment, 
and people just just lost it and, and that was caught on video i think by, by by nazi actually i think that video is still on facebook um it's, it's, it's still one of those videos that gives me good uh, it's one of those videos that that gave me confidence to say, hey, I can actually be an artistic thinker, you know. You think, know what I mean? So it's 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 um yeah, it was just one of one of those special moments. Um and, and and I'm happy that the moment like that is is, is at home, you know. It's 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 that's when people, you know, we're just receiving you well and appreciating you at different levels. Um yeah, and I mean, there's many others as well from festivals. Um, yeah, maybe I need, I need to go to you. <laughs> yeah, man. Um, I think that, that, that we have a, an internet issue here. But uh, and just binge and all those moments. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> let's let's see. Um, I think Zoom is, Zoom is picking up. A bit. So I don't know. Let's see. It's relevant, you know. Can you hear me? Talk about that one. Sorry, sorry. I, I think I can we, hear you. I can see you in my side. Uh, uh, back. You are back. You are back. I think you are. Cool. Okay. Um. Before we carry on, I just want to do something quick. Uh. And play you another voice note just before we close by a friend of yours and it will be here soon and hopefully by the time it's done the internet would have recovered let's check it out hi to all this is uh, the mike from global fantasy and uh, sunny greece and i would like to share with you some uh, words about cooler the song so the first thing i have to say is uh, that he's a really cool guy I know that may this sound common, but uh, he manages to keep his profile low with a clear focus on his vision. He's a music producer that knows really well where, where he wants to be and creates the path. Uh, we know each other for almost a decade now when uh, himself, DJ Angelo and myself played all together at a party in Athens. After that night, we had the chance to work and travel together many times in different gigs, different places, sharing the DJ booth. Uh, I admire the passion and the energy he puts into every performance and the fact that he set is a storytelling process with uh, a beginning, a main part and closer. It's just magic. His music uh, always works as a medium of inspiration for me. So what more to say than keep on jamming, Kulo? Peace. Keep on jamming, my brother. That's the mic. Your mic. Yeah. Oh, oh, what a brilliant guy. You guys what have known each other for, for what, 10 years now? Yeah. Um, Gio, Angelo, the mic. Um have been you know heavily 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 responsible you know for creating awareness around you know um, south african dance music in their home country as global fantasy you know so it, it's they, they they worked a lot you know with, with, with guys like uh, coffee you know like before and you know those are open to that you know for guys like me to be able to um, get in and, and, and introduce myself to, to the Greek crowd that really, really loves what we do, by the way. You know, um, Greece is just one of those places that when you go to, you feel like you're at home, you know, um, like literally, you know, and there's just something about, about them in their hearts, like very warm. Um, and um, I don't know, I think it's, I'm not sure if it's the Mediterranean or it's just, the whole summer vibe, you know, it's the energy there. It's just really special. Um, feel like a lot of love in the air, you know. So, I mean, I really appreciate Greece and, 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 and my Greek family. 
shout out to the guys, um, Global Fantasy. And I, I love I love you guys so much and I appreciate you. And I, I thank you so much, you know, for everything you've done. Um, every time I go to Greece, you know, um, you know, you got family to go to type of thing. Um, yeah, um, shout out to, 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 to the guys, man. Sure, bro, sure. Um, and your first international gig was in Spain, attending the Red Bull Music Academy. And um, I want to know, how would you describe the changes in that scene? And, and since playing at Club Mascherana in 2008, and now being a resident at Blue Marlin uh, on the island? Hello? Can you hear me? I can uh, hear you. Yeah. I can oh. hear you. <laughs> uh, the whole Red Bull music experience was, was amazing because it it, 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 it it exposed me to a different crowd, you know. So I was able to, and very fortunate um, to, to have my early stages, you know, of of, of my career, um, have me brewing in the best of both worlds, you know, just. You got international gigs there, or you got international exposure there, you got home exposure, you're working on your album here, you're not exposed yourself to the people yet, you know. So it was almost like a, a universal brewing process. Mm. And one thing I should, I should, I should say though about, about, you know, the crowds in Europe is that they're very keen, you know, very, very keen to, to be exposed to new music and new things, you know. It's, even the festivals day, I never, you never really saw the biggest names. You know, you had artists that I've never been heard of before, and you got a crowd that is ready to receive, you know, those people. Um, and, you know, it, it playing for people like that, you know, it, 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 it inspires you to do more, you know, to be creative, you know, because you know that someone out there is, is ready to, to consume it and, 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 and not just be... Be immersed in it, you know, like people are there so very spontaneous and, you know, very, very open hearted, you know, and, 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 and I really, I really appreciate that, you know, about, about, about Europe. And, um, and I think it's, 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 it's the attitude that builds, you know, it's the attitude that builds. That's why, you know, like tech, like genres like techno, they've got like these massive followings, you know, people. Uh, that 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 will just ride with the techno culture everywhere in the world. You know, they'll take a, a, a flight from Paris to LA. You know, to go to a techno show. You know, to you know, continue that 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 culture. You know, so those people are very keen and they take summer really seriously. You know, it's 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 also another beautiful thing to see. You know, playing uh, for people that take moments of relief. You know, um, I'm, I'm very seriously, you know, moments of letting go and forgetting about, you know, business and all that, you know, just to relax and unwind. And, um, yeah, and, and it puts them in a certain vibration, you know, like mm. spiritually and, and mentally. You know? mm. So it's, it's, it's such a, um, um, a blessing, you know, to be able to, to see and experience all of that for me. You know, mm. so as I said, for me, every time I go to these places and do something, uh, um, I, 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 I go beyond just the music, you know, just the whole environment, you know, um, I'm a very, I'm a very sensitive person, you know, so I, I, I pay attention, you know, to, to, to what's happening, you know, in the environment and, and, uh, yeah, yeah, man. Sure. And, and how did the residency at, at Blue Marlin, uh, uh, begin? Because I mean, like to play also, I, I want to, I would like you to explain just the vibe of that place because it doesn't look like a nightclub, you know, it looks like a, a nice chill out area, but also at night it seems like a Ziao. Um, but how did that residency come through, you know, and how does it feel playing in that space with people like Pitong and he's got a residency there as well? Yeah, man, that was such a blessing to, 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 to get that gig. I think um, the journey was, um, I think two or three years before that, um, started going to the island, you know, to, to play places like Circo Loco. Um, basically, you know, following that trail, that, 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 that coffee, 
um, 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 sort of like underwent um, really cool underground crowds, you know, um, insane energy. You know, I've, I've never seen, I've never felt any energy like that on a Monday. <laughs> you know, you know, so local shows are always on the Monday. And, you know, you just go there, you, you do what you do. In fact, you, you get karma as you, as, as, as you go, you know, because you're anxious, you don't know what to play on the island, etc. You know, you've heard many different stories about what to do and what not to do in this place, you know. So your mind is a little cluttered as well. Mm. Um, and so you just go there, you know, you're not sure. But just, you start playing and, and then you start, I started, I personally just started going deeper into myself. I started playing music that, that I like and I just started seeing people um, uh, respond accordingly, you know. So, um, yeah, I just kept it natural, you know, um, moving forward, you know, I played there and I got a call to play with Loco Dice at, at Amnesia. Um, and, um, yeah, you know, I, I, I got a couple of um, um, requests, you know, from different places on the island. And, you know, playing uh, with coffee and some of these shows. And through all of that, I was exposed, you know, to, to, to the people and, 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 and the decision makers, you know, of, of, of the island. And, and some of them really loved, um, I suppose, what I do, you know. And then the call from Blue Marlin came through and, uh, and uh, wow, I was so happy to, 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 to receive that, you know, Sunday, open air by the water, uh, one of the most beautiful settings to play at. Yeah, um, yeah, I feel like crying just talking about it. I'm just like, man, I missed that. <laughs> uh, fantastic crowd, beautiful people just coming out on a Sunday, you know. So, um, yeah, man, um, I'm, I'm, I'm really grateful, you know, um, I'm, I'm for, for, for gigs like Blue Marlin. And, um, yeah, and I'm praying and we're seeing them very soon. Mm. Sure, man. And... Um Will we ever see like a a a, a, a Kulo the song show on a much more higher level, more than further than DJing? I know we spoke about it, but like uh, if you could share. Yeah. Yeah. Um, as I said, bro, um, I'm at home during lockdown, reflecting on a lot of things. Um, those are the questions you know that I've been asking myself. Um, sitting down as to you know uh, where to next, and I think right now the creative freedom um, is very surface um, with the internet, you know, the TikToks of this world, you know, all the visual stuff. Um, there's so much creative um, elements, you know, you can um, put in, you know, with platforms like that, um, whether it's sonics or visuals. You know, so um, I think I might, I, might, I might be working on, on, on something like that, you know, very soon. You know, um, I won't even call it a set anymore. It's like a journey of my own creative expression um, and um, mixed with, with, with graphics, you know, of some sort. And uh, so, um, yeah, I'm reflecting and working um, on those ideas right now. And I think, um, yeah, post lockdown, you know, I'll be putting as much pressure as I can and energy um, towards manifesting those things. Yeah. And how, tell me, bro, how, how far or, or close are we in South Africa when it comes to our nightlife? You know, how far are we from elevating that li nightlife from what you see and what you've seen uh, abroad and from what you see when, you, when you're back at home? Um, we're not that far, actually. We're not that far, and then, and it's. I wouldn't really look at it as 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 a, as a competitive sort of like space. But anyway, uh, the the main thing that I can think of right now is managing little things like like hospitality, like just from an inside industry point of view. Um. You know, for an artist to give his best, you know, I think they have to be in a, you know, in a comfortable situation, comfortable environment. Um, and I've seen, you know, guys in Europe, 
Yeah, not necessarily the gigs with big budgets, you know, but even the small gigs, you know, with the smaller budgets, you know, people just put the utmost effort, you know, into taking care of you, you know, and making sure that you are well prepared um, 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 to perform, you know, and 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 I think it, the, the hospitality man is, is 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 such an important issue that I think we didn't pay attention to um, back home and probably looked at some of the things as 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 a luxury. You know, <laughs> but, you know, I think it's important to keep the artist, you know, uh, I'm, I'm comfortable, you know, so that he can do his best. And, you know, you can do a lot of things when you're happy, man. You know, when you're happy, so much can happen. You know, so much good can happen, you know, when, when, when you're in a happy space. Mm. And um, that happy space, you know, that's one thing, you know, um, um, the, the international industry has, has, has gotten right. And uh, that's why, you know, the energy of their shows, you know, is always like crazy and out there and, and full of love, you know, um, which is also a language, you know, I'm working on understanding a little bit more, you know, um, and it's, um, yeah, that's, that's all I can say. Man, I have to ask you about... Otherwise, otherwise we're doing great. We're doing great. And like so South Africa is, is, is amazing, you know. Um, it's, it's, it's amazing and, and, and it's got the right people as well and they, they understand the music a little bit more deep uh, as well I believe sure. when it comes to um, like the sound that we are playing yeah, yeah. man the internet is about to mess with yeah, us yeah I, yeah. yeah I think we, we, we're missing each other somewhere there yeah, <laughs> but, but I mean we're getting the gist of it uh, just one more question I want to ask you about this thing that you guys do this one here, the magic hand. That's what I call it. You see, guys, we the, love magic, hand. the magic hand. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me about that vibe, bro. Like, cause, cause, like, um, I'm gonna play a clip while while we are talking. Uh, it's not an audio clip, but yeah, t tell us about that, cause it seems like this thing. Uh, it's the one in in Ibiza. <laughs> Sorry, can you hear me? It's just energy, man. Yeah, it's just energy. You know, when when it's it's also a signal as well. You know, like you you signaling with the people that I'm with you. I'm vibing with you. I feel you right now. We're feeling each other. You know. So it's yeah. It's just one of those interesting DJ gestures or reaction. You know, to 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 show love. It's one way of communicating with the crowd as well. And it just happened naturally. I, I haven't even thought about it, you know. Um, I know I do some certain crazy things when I'm really feeling a song or when I'm deep in it or when I'm in the zone or whatever, you know. So, um, yeah, I, I suppose it's just a signal of communication with the crowd. <laughs> for sure, for sure. That's the magic hand right there, my man. Um, anyway, I want yeah. to yeah, I think we can pack it here, bro. Like, I, I just want to say to you, thank you so much for, for doing this, you know, and for sharing your knowledge and your experiences, bro. Like, um, I'm really honored. Yeah, man. Um, thank you for having me, man. Uh, I just feel like I, I just, I'm exiting a therapy session, actually. You know? For sure. I'll send you my yeah. invoice for that. <laughs> Um, I, I love, I love, I love, I love anyone that knows me personally. They'll tell you that I love, I love, I love having good conversations and and breaking things down and understanding them better. Um, hear other people's stories and go on their journeys, you know, and take another look into your own life. Um, and it makes me a better person, you know. We'll talk like your pillies. For sure, for sure. And well, before we go, I have to ask you this one question, man. Like, um, it's Youth Day today in South Africa. Um, from a music standpoint, like, what is it, what would you like to see more happening or what would you like to see, especially the youth, the younger guys, the younger ladies do more of? What is that thing or what are those things that you'd like to see us doing more? Um, I would like to see us get to a level where um, master the, the, the language of compassion, you know, um, really doing our best to to show other guys that it is, it, it is possible. Yeah, you know, in, in music, um, because I mean, self-esteem 
you know, and, and I think it's one of the main issues, you know, um, considering like, the history of, of, of this country. And I think people, you know, should really work on understanding themselves better, you know, dealing with their issues um, so they can enjoy the journey, you know, um, even better and, and even do better things in the future, you know, and even create better relationships, you know, of value, you know, and um, yeah, you know, just um, check yourself and, um, you know, really try your best to, 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 to ride the boat of humility. Um, uh, and I understand that, you know, there's, there's a lot of, um, there's a lot of, like high notion, you know, on, on, on the subject of being hard and, and being strong, you know, in, in this country, you know, um, and I, I think we should just re, re look at that, you know, and say, you know, it's, it's okay to be, to be, to, to be vulnerable, you know, it's, 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 it's okay to, to be, to be emotional, you know, it's, 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 and, and you must forget that, especially with music, we're dealing with people, mm. you know, all the time, you know, you, Communicating these energies in between, and it's, it's 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 at the end of the day for me, whatever we do, it should serve the people well, you know. And I think if we are well inside, then we shall serve the people well. Mm -hmm. Bro, I love that so much, and uh, thank you for sharing that, bro. I'm just gonna close yeah. by 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 uh, sharing some of the answers that people shared uh, to today's question of the day. If you could go party anywhere in the world, where would you go? Uh, the case says Amsterdam for the freedom of partying and smoking and drinking in peace. <laughs> I'm with you there, my man. Kamokhelo uh, says uh, Bramfontein uh, deep, in the, in, deep in the city. Man, I haven't been there, but I only see the videos are uh, fire. Uh, another guy says uh, they would like to go to Ibiza and uh, the winter conference in Miami. And Hausa says Kuguletu is actually quite... Oh, Kuloletu is actually quite right about Thailand. It's a whole vibe, man. I need to go to Thailand too. Anyway, I want to go. A place that I, I want to go for partying though, like is, is really Greece. Because I do want to check out what is... Yeah, man. I, I really would like to. Best, best experience. Best, best experience. Mykonos uh, Santorini. Those are my favorites. Mm. Yeah, I'll, I'll yeah. speak to you and the mic for that. Uh, maybe in 2021. <laughs> hook something yeah, up. Yeah, man. Have a good time. You're gonna have a good time there. For sure. Lovely place to be. Lovely vibe. Mm -hmm. You'll come back very, very happy. <laughs> <laughs> away, away, away. Anyway, bro, enjoy your enjoy your youth day and then we'll we'll catch up soon. Thanks, brother. Happy youth day. God bless. Peace out. And everyone who's watching, thank you so much for watching. Share the video. Take somebody who might learn from it and remember to stay creative. Peace out.